This is a screencast for Lesson 11 in Stephen C Sharp 24 Hour Trainer. This lesson talked about variables and performing simple calculations. In this triad, we're going to build this application, which adds up the cost for four items, calculates the subtotal, sales tax, and then a grand total. So here's the application I've built for this. Right now, I built the user interface, but there's no code behind it. You can build the user interface on your own. It's not very difficult. It's just a bunch of text boxes. The only odd thing is this thing is a numeric up-down control. So it restricts the user's value so they can't enter, for instance, 3.7 or a piece of some letters and stuff. They can only pick a number. The interesting part of this program is in the, behind the Calculate button. So if we go in there to create the event handler, this is where we're going to do our work. Now I found, particularly if you haven't been doing a lot of this before, the easiest way to keep things straight is to break this into three separate steps. Get the input values, calculate results, and display the results. Now you can certainly do these mixed together. You can calculate some values and display them. And in some cases you can even do the calculation and display them all in one giant line of code. But keeping them in three separate sections generally makes this a lot easier to follow and understand. So let's do it that way. Get input. What inputs are there? Those are the things the user fills in. These text boxes, the values the user selects in these up-down controls, the tax rate, and the shipping cost. All the other text boxes over here that have no values in them we're going to calculate. So let's get the inputs. These are currency numbers, so I'm going to treat them all as decimal. Uh, the quantities are not currency, but if we treat them as decimal, then we can make all the variables use the same data type. We don't need to worry about values being promoted um, to other data types. So decimal quantity 1, quantity 1 equals what? It's whatever the user selected in the quantity 1 numeric up-down control. So it's quantity 1 numeric up-down dot value. Now we have four items on this bill of sale that are all pretty much the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste this code and then change the, the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so those are the quantities. Now let's get their price each. This is currency. I'm going to say price each one equals what? We need to get whatever's in the text box and turn it into a decimal value. So we use decimal.parse. <clears throat> that turns text into a decimal value. And then whatever is in that first price each text box. So price each one text box dot text. Again, I'm going to copy and paste. And it's a fairly common bug if you do a lot of copy and paste to get these change these small changes wrong. So for example, to forget to change this one or to double up on two of them. So like change this one to a three instead of a four. So if you do copy and paste, and for this sort of thing it's pretty easy, um, be sure you make the correct changes. Otherwise the bugs can sometimes be pretty subtle. So there's quantity and price each. We also need to get the tax rate and the shipping charge. So decimal tax rate equals decimal dot parse whatever's in the tax rate text box dot text and then finally decimal shipping cost equals decimal dot parse <clears throat> whatever's in the shipping text box. So those are the inputs. Now we calculate results. Let's see what results we need to calculate. We need these extended prices. That's simply quantity times price each. We need the subtotal, the sales tax amount, and the grand total. So decimal extended price 1 equals quantity 1 times price each one. Again, it's the same calculation for all four items, so I'm just going to copy and paste. Next, we need our subtotal. That's simply the sum of all these extended prices.
we need our sales tax. That's going to be the subtotal times the tax rate. And finally, we need the grand total. And that's going to be the subtotal plus the sales tax plus the shipping cost. So there are all, all our results. Now we just need to display them. So let's just plug them into those text boxes. So the extended price one text box dot text equals the extended price one. But extended price one is a decimal, and this property needs to be text. So we need to convert this into a string. I'm going to use the two string method. And as long as we're doing this, I'm going to use the C format to convert it into a currency value. So on my machine, it should display dollar sign. Let's do our copy and paste trick. OK, next we display the subtotal. So subtotal text box equals subtotal dot, dot two string. And again, we'll turn that into currency value. <coughs> Sales tax. <coughs> sales tax text box dot text equals our sales tax dot two string turned into currency. And finally, the grand total text box dot text equals our grand total converted into a string as currency. So let's run the program and cross our fingers and see if it works. Yeah, what happened? Oh, I've got some typos here. I used a colon instead of a semicolon. Let's try again. OK, and that was all. So let's run calculate. It filled something into all the text boxes, so that's good. Um, it means we didn't forget anything. It's a little bit tricky, though, to see if this is correct or not. So we should probably do a little extra testing or at least stare harder at the results. 2 times $10 is 20. That's good. 1 times 30 is 30. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 700 is 700. So those are all reasonable. Subtotal, 756. Let's add that up. 700, 20, 56. That's correct. Times a 10% sales tax would be 7560. That's right. $5 shipping. And if we add all of that up, we get 60 cents. 6 plus 5 plus 5 is 6. Carry the 1. 13 carry the 1, 8. So that looks like it all works out. Now it's possible that there are bugs in here anyway. For example, we might accidentally be multiplying the $6 times this value instead of this value. So let's just do a little quick checking. I'm going to change all these price eaches to 10 so they're easy to multiply out. And I'm going to change this one to 3, this one to 4, this one to 5. Do calculations to make sure this should be 20, 30, 40, 50. So that looks good. You can do some other tests if you like to see if everything looks reasonable, but right now I think this application looks pretty good.